If God is perfect, why didn't he make this world as good as the world he will remake? Quick background. I got into a comments discussion with, I guess he's an atheist. On a previous video, after a little back and forth, he presented his big objection to the God of the Bible. I'll link the video below if you want to read the full comment for yourself to check if I'm misrepresenting his view. To summarize, if the new earth that Jesus will make, if there is no evil and still free will, why didn't God make this world already that way? The person is arguing that they didn't believe in Jesus because if Jesus will make such a better world in the future that that's possible, but didn't already, it makes him look like an imperfect designer. And thus, the idea of a perfect God of the Bible could be dismissed without further investigation. I admitted to him that he presented a good argument that I hadn't heard before. At the time of hearing it last week, I'm being trained in a new position in work, so that's where my mind mostly is. What I did first think of was, will we have free will on this new earth? How is it that we won't sin for eternity? What happens if we do? Will we be banished like Adam and Eve from Eden? I don't know if I'll last one day. Or are we mindless zombies? If we somehow won't sin, why didn't God create us all like that already? Instead, just a few that make it to the end of the narrow road. These arising questions were crumbling the idea of the new earth being a real possible paradise. What stopped the crumbling was, instead of drifting by the winds of maybe God should have done it this way or that way, grounding myself in, I didn't create myself, this life is a gift. God offered the free gift of eternal life and a perfected world to whomever believes Jesus Christ paid the price for their sins on the cross. That is still a good deal God left on the table for us. This life, however much evil we face or commit, is but a blink of the eyes. We are offered eternal life in a perfected world. Whatever this guy's preference is, that he would prefer it already would have happened, or he already wanted it to happen now, was not forever revoked by God, it's just temporarily delayed. We were created, we had no choice of being alive. We are given the choice to live forever in a perfect world, but we aren't forced to accept it. I know people, and for whatever reason, they don't want to live forever even in a perfect world. God will grant them their wish and they will perish. I now think it's better or more merciful and loving that God didn't force us all to live forever or to love the things that he loves or be the good that he is. That it's better we do get a sense of what evil and death is living in this fallen world, what it's like to live outside of the garden where God's laws are not enforced, where the fruits of the spirit do not always grow, and to then make the choice, now knowing the fruits of the flesh where love grows cold and people are only lovers of themselves, to want to turn from that, to have our faith in the new world to come. About the new earth, first off, the tempter won't be there, so already there's an improvement. As far as not sinning in the new world, Jesus lived a sinless life in this fallen world, and he will transform us to be like him. And the only beings that will be there in the new earth chose to be there knowing evil wouldn't exist there. In the new world, maybe we will have a limited will to pick only among good options. I'm not disappointed, I won't or can't pick evil anymore, this is good news. I feel bad when I sin, I'm not saddened that this will be a thing of the past. The other thing that comes to mind, I was thinking about this question, well why didn't God already make the world good, if he's going to make it good, and we'll have free will. Why didn't he already make the world this way? Well, in the beginning, before the fall, God said everything was good. Then the serpent came in and messed everything up. I don't know if that was what God wanted. He seemed pretty upset that that wasn't his plan, but he was going to react to it. He was going to fix the mess. I don't think he wanted it to happen because then he created the lake of fire. He then flooded the world after only a couple generations that God was disappointed in creation and how evil they, they they got to. So I don't think this was ever God's first choice of, oh, I'll let them see evil, I'll let them see good, and the ones who decide good, I'll let them live forever, and the ones who pick evil, well, they're gonna perish. And this off-ramp detour we took was because of the devil, was because of the devil and him introducing evil and temptation into the world. God didn't tempt us, the one who tempted us or the originator of that was the devil. And so all the stuff I was saying like, oh, it's even better that God let us see good and bad and make a decision. So now God's even better that we got to pick this, that that might all be uh, nonsense. And because it came from my own imagination, that's not in the Bible. I'm fine with that if that was all incorrect and going, no, it's not God wanted us to see good, see evil and then make a choice. That this is God's reaction to the mess the devil made. When the devil did what he did in the garden, when he tempted Eve, here I knew the difference between good and evil. He said, oh, you'll be like us, implying they already knew good and evil. So when he was tempting them, he knew what he was doing was evil, that he was entering evil into the world. When Adam and Eve ate, 
They didn't know good or evil yet. So that's why it's fair. Oh, they're given a, a chance for redemption, and the devil isn't. 